Watch this review here with a look at Major Force, who comes to us from the Target exclusive DC Universe Classic Superman Batman Public Enemies wave. Because this wave was a movie tie-in and may not even be an official DC Universe Classics wave, they do in fact use a different packaging, which actually looks pretty cool. Prominently has Superman display at the top, with Batman down here at the bottom. The coolest feature though is on the back of the box where we have a full panel portrait of the figure, which gives a better idea of what the character looks like than just looking in through the front, especially because they have this funky pose. Now this was actually a split wave. In the first half it came with the normal Batman, the normal Superman, Icicle, and Silver Banshee. Second half, which I've just picked up today, I figured I'd review all these guys this week, is the Major Force, the Black Lightning, a metallic Superman, and the blue and gray Batman. And the Collect and Connect is the Imposing Brimstone, whose upper torso is a little bit visible here. He basically uses the same sculpt as Kilowog. Or maybe it was exactly the same sculpt, I can't remember. Now if you've seen the movie, you'll realize this is a little bit of a strange wave here. For one thing, you know, if you just look at the lineup, you'll notice somebody's a little missing here. That's right, our main antagonist and devagonist, what the hell, whatever the hell the word for is the third most important character in the story, is completely gone. I mean, instead of getting Lex Luthor, we get Icicle, who didn't even speak during the entire movie. and was only there for like two shots. I mean, he was with a team of ice wielders who were trying to capture Superman, but his two teammates spoke, he didn't, and I don't even remember seeing his energy projectile. Silver Banshee, though, fought Superman for a few seconds, so, I don't know. Major Force, of course, played a pretty big role, and Brimstone was seen for all of two shots. And he didn't even fight. He just, uh, got beat. Now the really cool thing, though, is that nobody else seems to have done a YouTube review of this figure yet, so I'm ahead of the pack for once in my very short YouTube career. All the figures in the Public Enemies wave come with two things. The first being the Collect and Connect piece. In this case, it's the upper torso of Brimstone. And the second is a stand with the little logo emblazoned there. The wave also has a more cartoony slash comically look to the characters, which is in keeping with the film. Uh, as for Major Force specifically, I'm a little disappointed. Don't get me wrong, in most regards, this is a great looking figure. The head sculpt is pretty much dead on to what the movie was. The slightly modified torso sculpt looks great. I mean, it's basically the same thing you'll see in the DC Universe Classics line, but they've made some small tweaks here and there. Arms, as far as I can tell, are just a straight up recycle. Let's just pull in Superman here to compare. Yep. Um. But once we get down to the lower body, we start to see some problems. The thighs are completely detached from the groin area. It really reminds me of Hawkman over here, but even in Hawkman's case, it wasn't quite as severe. I mean, you can see there's a little bit of separation, but this is a significant amount of separation, which becomes even more visible when you pull the two legs forward a bit. The other big problem is the fact that the thighs themselves are just so far out that they kind of bump into each other and, you know, it kind of forces the leg posture out a bit. Plus, I wasn't going to say anything, but this crotch is just completely uneven. I mean, it goes down to this distance on this side, that distance on that side. It's these little things, devils in the details. And uh, frankly, I, I hate this because I don't want to be paying this much attention to a figure's crotch. <clears throat> but yeah, um, other than that kind of weird production error, which I believe is on all the figures. Well, all the major force saying, right? I haven't opened up any of the other ones from this line. I mean, just look at this. This is a pretty decent figure. I mean, this is about all you could possibly expect from something from the DC Universe Classics line. Paint-wise, the paint doesn't really jump out at you, but there are no paint errors. These are the colors that the character 
has. So you can't really complain. Now on the back here, these really crazy looking shoulder blades where one's further up than the other and then this one's really wide, this one's kind of tall. Not digging that. Also look at the hair here. That's so crazy. Looks a little bit like Hammerhead or um, shoot, what's the other guy? Or was the Spider-Man villain Hammerhead? I can't remember. In terms of height, Major Force is six and three quarter inches tall, which makes him a little tall for a DC Universe classic figure. Articulation wise, he's basically the standard articulation. Um, head only rotates though, unlike some of the other figures. Really nothing really restricting anything on this figure because he's got no capes, no accessories, no belts. You know, so you get the usual full range of motion. But yeah, um, Major Force is probably the figure I was most looking forward to this way because he's a total badass in the movie. And other than that really stupid looking lower torso issue, you know, this is a pretty cool looking figure. The other figure that looks really awesome this wave is Superman, who I'll probably review next. But um, this video is running a bit long because I did all the package talk in the beginning, so until next time, folks.